Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a logarithmic equation. We have log x to the power n equals log x to the power n. Obviously, with parentheses, it's more clear that we need to raise whatever log x is to the power n on the left hand side, right? Okay, great. So, are we solving for x? Sure, we are. But I'll also show you how we can solve for n. All right? So, it's going to be two problems in one. Let's get started. Now, I'm going to start by setting log x equal to y. Don't ask why. And from here, I get y to the power n equals log x. What am I going to do? Okay, I need to move the n to the front, so this becomes n log x, therefore n y. Great. Using properties of logarithms, I can do that, right? So now we have this simpler looking equation. And we're going to try to solve for y, because we're trying to solve for x, right? So to solve for y, we're going to divide both sides by y to the first power, so like this, y to the n divided by y equals ny divided by y. Of course, we need to mention that, okay, y should not equal zero. And what does that entail? That just means that log x cannot be zero, which means x cannot equal one. Now, if is x equals one a solution, we can separately check. Let's plug it in. If x is one, then we get log 1 to the power n equals log 1 to the power n. As you know, this can be, no, this can't be written. So what is log 1? It's 0. So this is 0 to the power n. And this is n times log 1, which is n times 0, which is 0. But both of these are 0 as long as n does not equal 0, right? Because 0 to the power 0 does not equal 0, right? Well, isn't that one? Well, I talked about it in a different video. You can go ahead and check that out right here. Okay, great. Let's continue. After dividing by y, we get the following equation. This is n, um, y to the first power. y to the power n minus 1 equals n. Remember, we're solving for y. Let's go ahead and raise both sides to the power 1 over n minus 1, right? That's going to get rid of the n minus 1, and it's going to give us this on the right-hand side. So these two cancel out. We end up with y equals n to the power 1 over n minus 1. Nice. Again, remember we said that n should not equal 1, right? Did we say that? I don't know. I don't remember. But anyways, if n equals 1, we are in trouble, aren't we? Okay. Now, by the way, let me tell you what happens if n is equal to 1. Go back to the original and replace n with 1, you get log x equals log x, which is always true for all x values that are greater than 0. So it's not too bad, right? Nice. Now, if n is equal to 3, for example, then we get something like x equals, wait a minute, we didn't find x yet, right? What am I talking about? Okay, let's go back, rewind, and continue from here. What is y? y is log x. I know some people are going to make like, come on, dude, you have to have a script so you don't make these mistakes. But okay, anyways, whatever. It's more natural this way. Set this equal to log x. And now from here, since the base is 10, you knew that, right? 10 to the power, this is equal to x. So x becomes 10 to the power n to the power 1 over n minus 1. Don't you love that exponential? Okay, beautiful. So that's x value in terms of n. Now, in this case, if n is equal to 3, then we get x is equal to 10 to the power, 3 to the power, 1 half. Remember, when you have something like this, like a to the b to the c, we meant b to the c to be the exponent when a is the base. Make sense? So this is the same thing as 10 to the power square root of 3, whatever that number is, right? Well, it just looks good. Very irrational, isn't it? Right? Okay. Uh, anyways, let's go back to this. Uh, we talked about n being 1. If you replace n with 1 in the original equation, you don't have to worry about y in this case. But as you can see here, n equals 1 doesn't give us something nice. Because it's such a special case that it has to be treated separately. Okay? So far, so good? Awesome. So that's going to be the general solution. And you can explore pretty much any n value. By the way, 
this is a family of solutions because for every n value we get a different solution right cool in other words it's a parameter instead of solving for log x to the power 3 equals log x cubed i just gave you n so that it's more generalized and if you, you can replace n with anything you want right just be careful if you use n equals 1 what if n is not a real number that's a good question right and we can talk about it later maybe who knows but let's go ahead and talk about the other thing i mentioned at the beginning do you remember well i said that we're solving for x right but can we solve for n as well let's give it a try because it's going to be fun right log x to the power n equals log x to the power n okay so we are trying to solve for n can we let's use substitution because it's powerful right but before that and we, we're not re really worried about using substitution here that much because we're not solving for x we're going to treat this as a constant so let's go ahead and still replace it with something but this time let's use a that is more constant looking than the y right hopefully there's still variables but a is more uh, common with uh, constants Anyways, so this gives us a to the power n equals n a, just like before, a to the power n minus 1 equals n. Now, in this case, don't try to isolate a because you're not going to solve for a, you're going to solve for n, right? This is the second part, remember? So to solve for n, we got to do something interesting. Should I tell you what? Okay, not yet. So first, I need to go back. Actually, this wasn't good because I like this better. Okay, I don't know why I came up with this. I should probably delete it, right? Erase. Okay, hopefully you didn't see that. Now, we're going to solve for n. How do we solve for n here? n is on both sides. Isn't that interesting? Yes, we can do this. We can bring the n's on the same side. So let's multiply both sides by a to the power negative n. It's going to be like n a times a to the power negative n. And that gives us 1 because a to the power n times a to the power negative n equals 1. Yeah? Do we agree? Awesome. Now here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and put the a on the right hand side because we don't want those together. We want the constants on the other side. We only want variables on this side, okay? Which is the left hand side, by the way. Now this is almost good. We just got to do a little bit of, um, you know, trickery or exponentiation. <laughs> Same thing, right? So you can replace a with e to the power ln a. Did you know that? And now we're going to do it only on the left-hand side. Don't worry about this. I mean, you can, but who cares, right? That's just a uh, dumb constant. Anyways, so now we get the following. n times e to the power ln a to the power negative n equals 1 over a. Awesome. Do you know what I'm getting at? Okay, if you know it, don't say it yet because I'll talk about it in a little bit. Okay, let's keep it a secret. Now we can multiply these exponents n times e to the power negative n ln a equals 1 over a now i have a negative n ln a and i have an n i mean obviously making both sides negative is super easy just attach negative multiply by negative one but i want my exponent negative n ln a here so i should multiply by ln a if you do that you're going to get something super duper interesting and that's called lambert's w function so isn't this problem screaming, Lambert, come back, we need you. Actually, we need you. Seriously. This is you, and that is you. And what do you have? U, e to the u. And we're going to apply Lambert's W function. Let's do it. Substitution is cool. I use that a lot. I encourage you to use it too, but put the Lambert's W function on both sides and something magical, mathematical happens. When you apply Lambert's W function on u e to the u, it just becomes u. That's the inverse function for u e to the u. And the right hand side, unfortunately, doesn't simplify that much. And a is a constant, but we don't even know what it is, right? But anyways, leave it like that. That's perfectly fine. And now the next thing we're going to do is set u to whatever it was negative n ln a. So we're going to hit negative n ln a is equal to Lambert's w function of negative ln a over a. Again, that's a constant because a is a constant, remember? n is a variable. And we should solve for n. How do you solve for n? First of all, you can negate both sides. 
I like doing it in steps. And then I want to divide by ln a. Let's do it. n equals negative Lambert's w function of negative ln a over a divided by ln a. You thought it would be easy to solve for n, right? That's not the case. But it's fun. Now, we got this, but we do need to solve for what? Wait, wait a minute. We were supposed to solve for n. We're done. Wait a minute. What is a though, right? We have to go back and back substitute. A is, I think, log x. Yay. So a is equal to log x. I mean, keep your notes handy, right? And now we're going to replace a with log x. So it's going to look like this. Negative ln a of log x, which is kind of like a two-layer logarithm. It's fun stuff. Divide by log x. All of that is divided by ln of log x. And this is n by itself. Lemmer's W function, obviously, depending on the values of x, we're going to have multiple values probably, right? There's multiple branches, so on and so forth. But anyways, this just brings us to the end of the video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.